Welcome back to Off-Label Veterinary News, your source for commentary on animals, medicine, and practice life. Let's jump in to some of the stories you might have missed. Our first story this week has the potential to set off an interplanetary dispute. This week at the National Dog Show, a Brussels Griffon was declared the best in show. The problem with this story is that people have been comparing the Brussels Griffon with a Wookiee. It is in no way, shape, or form a Wookiee. It is an Ewok. The differences are pretty apparent. Wookiees come from the planet Kaishik. They are technologically advanced. They're over eight feet tall, while Ewoks are more primitive based on the planet Endor. This needs to be settled, so when you're discussing with clients the winner of the National Dog Show, please keep in mind, it is an Ewok, not a Wookiee like Chewbacca. Speaking of pets, both Google and Apple have announced that they are applying their artificial intelligence algorithms to detect the faces of our beloved dogs and cats. Yes, automatically your pets will be sorted into their own categories. No word yet on if they're going to include horses or guinea pigs or reptiles or birds or whatever. This means it's easier than ever before to keep track of those two cute kitty photos and downright darling doggy photos. From a medical perspective, I think this technology holds tremendous promise. There may be a time in the near future when we can actually use facial recognition to search our patient databases, maybe identifying breeds, maybe identifying conditions. I mean, this is really exciting. What do you think? The next story comes to us from the great state of Texas in a little town called Sulphur Springs, just east of Dallas. Turns out a veterinarian was called about a dog that was exhibiting signs consistent with rabies. The dog was brought into the veterinary clinic where it promptly bit a staff member. The owner elected to euthanize and submit the brain tissue for analysis. Now, that's where most of these stories end, but in this particular instance, the head got lost in the mail. This staff member must now undergo potentially painful series of injections. This story is important because it highlights the importance of training your staff on what to do with potential rabies cases. While I'm not sure of the details in this case, make sure your staff reviews its rabies protocol today. Rabies exposure has always been a very sensitive area to me. When I was an undergrad, I worked at a local humane society, actually euthanizing dogs five days a week. Of course, many of the dogs that we were euthanizing were there for bites. And as my luck would have it, one day, a partially sedated bite case came in and managed to somehow lock its jaws around my ankle, which is the reason that I still wear boots in clinic to this day. So I've always taken extra precaution when it comes to bite cases and potential rabies exposure. That's why we always had our staff who handled animals inoculated against rabies, just in case. I know many of you are saying, it's too expensive to vaccinate my staff, but listen to the facts of this Texas case. The practice owner estimates it has already cost him over $80,000 in lost wages and in vaccines. You do the math and decide. For me, I'm going to always err on the side of caution and safety. Rabies is a very important topic and one that you should be talking about with your staff. So today I encourage you to go and review your protocols. What do you do when a bite case comes in? How do you handle a case displaying symptoms consistent with rabies? And what are your policies and procedures for shipping any brain tissue for analysis? I wanna hear from you. And finally, I'd like to briefly touch on a topic that will affect all of us, and that is the net neutrality debate. The internet is a public resource. We need to preserve it. We need to tell Congress that we want the internet to remain free and open as it is now and not give control of the internet to private corporations. Off-labelers, there's every indication that the FCC is going to roll back net neutrality. Now, you won't see immediate changes overnight. In fact, I think it will be a slow trickle of death over the next one to two years. I think that most of these corporations will wait and see what happens in the 2018 and maybe even 2020 elections before making those big, bold moves. But what we could see in the very near future is something that looks a lot like your cable television providers. And we know we're trying to cut the cord. So do you want the cable of the internet. In fact, the only people that are gonna benefit from this are the shareholders of these corporations. So if you own millions of dollars in Time Warner, or Comcast, or Verizon, you're gonna make out like a bandit. But for the rest of us, we're gonna wind up paying a premium. So what do you think, off-labelers? Have you given net neutrality a thought? 
Do you think it was something that we should be talking about as a profession? I'll leave links down in the description below where you can learn more and share your opinions. This vote will happen in just a few weeks, so it's really important that you share your thoughts with the federal government. Well, that's it for this edition of Off-Label Veterinary News. If you like content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ding the bell so you'll be notified when content like this drops on your internet doorsteps. Until next time, keep living that off-label life. Bye.